In the last video, we gave a bit of an overview of potassium argon dating. In this video, I want to go through a concrete example. It'll get a little bit mathy, usually involving a little bit of algebra or a little bit of exponential decay, but to really show you how you can actually figure out the age of some volcanic rock using this technique, using a little bit of mathematics. So we know that anything that is experiencing radioactive decay, it's experiencing exponential decay. And we know that we can, there's a generalized way to describe that, and we go into more depth and kind of prove it in other Khan Academy videos. But we know that the amount, the amount as a function of time, so if we say n is the amount of a radioactive sample we have at some, at some time, we know that's equal to the initial amount we have, we'll call that n sub 0, times e to the negative kt where this constant is particular to that thing's half-life. And to figure it out, and we're going to do this for the example of potassium-40, we know that after when time is 1.25 billion years, that the amount we have left is half of our initial amount. So let's write it that way. So let's say when we, we start with n naught, we start with n naught, whatever that might be. It might be 1 gram, kilogram, 5 grams, whatever it might be. Whatever we start with. We take e to the negative k times 1.25 billion years. That's the half-life of potassium-40. So 1.25 billion years. We know after that long that half of the sample will be left. So we will have 1 half, 1 half and not left. Whatever we started with, we're going to have half left after 1.25 billion years. Divide both sides by n naught. Divide both sides by n naught. And then to solve for k, we can take the natural log of both sides. So you get the natural log of 1 half, we don't have that n naught there anymore, is equal to the natural log of this thing. The natural log is just saying, to what power do I have to raise e to get e to the negative k times 1.25 billion? So the natural log of this, the power that I have to raise e to to get, e, get to e to the negative k times 1.25 billion is just negative k times 1.25 billion. Or I could write it as negative 1.25, let me write it times 10 to the ninth times 10 to the ninth k. That's the same thing as 1.25 billion. We have our negative sign, and we have our k. And then to solve 4k, we can divide both sides by negative 1.25 billion. And so we get k, and I'll just flip the sides here. k is equal to the natural log of 1 half times negative 1.25 times 10 to the ninth power. And what we can do is we can multiply the negative times the top, or you could view it as multiplying the, the, the numerator and the denominator by a negative so that the negative shows up at the top. And so we could make this as over 1.25 times 10 to the ninth. This is 1.25 billion. And negative, let me write it over here in a different color. Negative, the negative natural log, well, I could just write it this way. If I have a, a natural log of b, we know from our logarithm properties, this is the same thing as the natural log of b to the a power. So the negative natural log of 1 half is the same thing as the natural log of 1 half to the negative 1 power. And so this is the same thing. Anything to the negative 1 power is just this multiplicative inverse. So this is just the natural log of 2. So negative natural log of 1 half is just the natural log of 2 over here. So we were able to figure out our k. It's essentially the natural log of 2 over the half-life of this substance. So we could actually generalize this if we were talking about some other radioactive substance. And now let's think about a situation, now that we've figured out a k, let's think about a situation where we find in some sample, so let's say the potassium that we find, let's say it is 1 milligram. I'm just going to make up these numbers. And let's say, and usually these aren't measured directly, and you really care about the relative amounts. But let's say you're able to figure out the potassium is 1 milligram. And let's say that the argon, actually, let me say the potassium 40 found. And let's say the argon 40 found. Let's say it is 0 0.01, 0 0.01 milligram. So how do we how can we use this information and what we just figured out here, which is derived from the half-life, to figure out how old how old this sample right over here? How do we figure out how old this sample is right over there? Well, what we what we need to figure out, we know that n, we know that n, the amount we were left with, is this thing right over here. So we know that we're left with one milligram. So we know that what, what we have left is one milligram. And that's going to be equal to some initial amount. It's going to be some initial amount, where we'll use both of this information to figure that initial amount out, times e to the negative k t. 
And we know what k is, and we'll figure it out later. So k is this thing right over here. So we need to figure out what our initial amount is. We know what k is, and then we can solve for t. How old is this sample? And to figure out our initial amount, we just have to remember that for every, for every argon 40 we see, that must have decayed from, when, we, when you have potassium 40, 11% after 11% decays, when it decays, 11% decays into argon 40, and the rest, 89%, decays into calcium 40. We saw that in the last video. So however much argon 40, that is 11% of the decay product. So if you want to think about the total number of potassium 40s that have decayed since this was, since this was kind of stuck in the in the lava and we learned that anything that was there before any argon 40 that was there before would have would have been able to get out of the liquid lava before it froze or before it hardened so to figure out how much how much potassium 40 this is derived from we just derive it we divide it by 11% so maybe i could say k k initial the potassium 40 initial is going to be equal to the amount of potassium 40 we have today 1 milligram plus the amount of potassium 40 we needed to get this amount of argon 40. So we have this amount of argon 40, 0 0.01 milligrams. And that, the number of milligrams there, it's really just 11% of the original potassium, potassium 40 that it had to come from. The rest of it turned into calcium 40. So we divide it by 11%, or 0 0.11. And I'm doing the, this isn't the exact number, but it'll get the general idea. And so our initial, which is really this thing right over here, I could call this n naught. I could call this n naught. This is going to be equal to, and I won't do any of the math, so we have one milligram we have left, is equal to one milligram, which is what we found, plus 0 0.01 milligram over 0 0.11, and then all of that times e to the negative, e to the negative kt. And what you see here is when we want to solve for t, assuming we know k and we do know k now, that it really the absolute amount doesn't matter. What actually matters is the ratio. Because if we're solving for t, you want to divide both sides of this equation by this quantity right over here. So you get this side, the left-hand side, divide both sides. You get 1 milligram over this quantity. I'll write it in blue. Over this quantity is going to be 1 plus, I'm just going to assume actually that the units here are milligrams. So you get 1 over this quantity, which is 1 plus 0 0.01 over the 11 over the 11 percent. That is equal to e to the negative kt. And then you want to take, if you want to solve for t, you want to take the natural log of both sides. So then you get, so this is equal right over here. You want to take the natural log of both sides. So you get the natural log of 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01 over over 0.11 or 11% is equal to negative kt. And then to solve for t, you divide both sides by negative k. So I'll write it over here. And you can see this is a little bit cumbersome mathematically, but we're getting to the answer. So we got the natural log of 1 over 1 plus 0 0.01 over 0.11 over negative k. Well, what is negative k? We're just dividing both sides of this equation by negative k. Negative k is the negative of this, over the negative natural log of 2 over 1.25 times 10 to the 9th. And now we can get our calculator out and just solve for what this time is. And it's going to be in years, because that's how we figured out this constant. So let's get out my handy TI-85. And so first I'll do this part. So this is 1 divided by 1 plus 0.01 divided by 0.11, so that's this part right over here. That gives us that number. And then we want to take the natural log of that. So let's take the natural log of our, this is just our previous answer, so it's the natural log of 0.9166667, gives us negative 0.087. So that's this numerator over here. And we're going to divide that, so this number is our numerator right over here. We're going to divide that by the negative let me make, I'll use parentheses carefully. The negative natural log of 2, the negative natural log of 2, that's that there, divided by, divided by 1.25 times 10 to the 9th, times 10 to the 9th. 
So divided by, so it's negative natural log of 2 divided by 1.25. E9 means times 10 to the 9th. And I closed both parentheses. And now we need our drum roll. So this should give us our t in years. And we get, let's see how many. This is this is 1,000, so it's 3,000. So we get 156 million, or 156.9 million years if we round. So this is approximately, or I could just say approximately 157 million years old sample. So the whole point of this, I know the math was a little bit involved, but it's something that you would actually see in kind of a pre-calculus class or an Algebra 2 class when you're studying exponential growth and decay. But the whole point I wanted to do this is to show you that it's not some crazy voodoo here and you know Sal gave this very high level explanation and then you say, oh well, you know, there must be some super difficult mathematics after that. The mathematics really is something that you would see in high school. And if you saw if you saw a sample that had this ratio of argon 40 to potassium 40, you would actually be able to do that fairly, you know, that that high school mathematics. You would be able to do that to figure out this is a 157 million year old sample of volcanic rock.